Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the Desert Dog. We're gonna talk about some of the things that I like about the trailer, and maybe some of the things I don't like so much about the trailer. We're also gonna talk about some of the things that need repair. We've been dragging this trailer up and down trails for the last 10 years or more. It really has taken a beating. So there's gonna be a lot of repairs that are gonna to need to be done. We're gonna have an upcoming series on getting this thing back into top shape. I would like to know what you like about the trailer and maybe what you do different. So down in, the, down in the comments, let me know what you would like and what you would do different. I'd like to hear about that. Anyway, let's get on with the video. question I sometimes get asked is whether or not I would build that box, the storage container, under the trailer uh, again. And for me, I think the answer would be no. And there's two reasons why. One is it reduces ground clearance by quite a bit. And although this was originally designed to be a really a street trailer on the road trailer, I've ended up taking an off-road more than not. I mean, it spends a ton of time. And so reduced clearance plus the difficulty of trying to lift up the mattress to get into it is just more work than it's worth because you end up having to get two people. You're trying to lift this up at the same time you're trying to pull up that access inside. And it just doesn't work very well. It's just not a convenient, a convenient thing. And if you look down here, sorry about the camera wobble. If you look down here, you can see where the vinyl flooring is starting to peel back up again. And I've got a solution for that. When I replace the, the um, vinyl flooring, I'm going to take aluminum angle iron and I'm going to put it right along the edge. So it will hold that down. And see how nice that window is? So when you peel the cover off, and the cover really protects the window from rocks and stuff like that, it just really brightens up the inside of the trailer and gives a whole lot of light. So during the daytime, it feels really nice. And then at night, you actually get to see the stars and stuff out the window. So would I put the front window in again? Absolutely, I would. Now here's a fan that I used. It's a computer fan. And I mounted it inside the trailer to help vent the trailer. So when I turn a switch on, this one and one on the other side, both go on. I calculated that this would exchange the air inside the cabin every three and a half minutes. And although that sounds pretty good, in, in reality, it never worked quite as well as I hoped. I think if I was to do it again, I would get a much larger fan. So if we look right here, You'll see where the fiberglass is starting to bubble up and separate from the underlying plywood. Um, all of that's going to have to be ground out and new fiberglass reapplied to get that back into the shape that it needs to be because it's, it's definitely not okay like that. It'll allow water in and, and uh, you can actually see where the fiberglass is starting to come up. So that's going to have to all be replaced and there's quite a bit of this around the entire trailer. <clears throat> I suspect I didn't get enough wet out on the plywood before I laid the glass on. I probably should have added an extra layer of resin and really let that soak into the wood and I think that would have probably probably stopped this uh, peel up that is starting to happen throughout the trailer. Now right here you can see where I've had some screws start to pop out. Now these are the ones that hold the um, shelves in place inside the cabin. And they backed out and I'm not quite sure why they did that, but I filled them in with a little bit of uh, a little bit of putty in there just to keep the water from intruding on them. 
but that needs to be ground off and fixed it's not going to be okay the way it is so if i'm going to be stripping some of the the paint off and the fiberglass off i'll come back in and and patch these and fix them now this is the door sill and you can really see where we're starting to have some issues where the the paint has come off and water starting to intrude in this area once again, I think this problem really came from the fact that I used Bondo to try to smooth that out and create a nice smooth surface. And water got into that and it started to come up. So that's going to have to all be ground back to wood, soaked in uh, penetrating epoxy. And then I think I'm going to have to use um, more epoxy filler to create the smooth surface and get away from anything that looks like uh, Bondo or body putty or anything like that. It's just not up to the task. So it's going to be a pretty big effort. I have the same issue on the side of the doors. Okay, so here's some more of, of where the uh, paint's starting to peel off. I'm going to have to fix that. The door, we'll lose the door if I don't get that fixed because water will intrude and start delaminating the wood. So I really do need to get that fixed as quickly as possible. So that's going to be right up at the top of my priority list. Once again, this is more of the uh, where the body putty has flaked off and then the paint came up with it. So that's all got to be uh, repaired. Going to have to really get on that and get that fixed. It's a it's a big problem because once water gets inside and starts rotting, it's going to just take the whole trailer with it. So now's the time to get that fixed. Inside, there's uh, obvious water intrusion where we've had water come in. I've not been able to track that leak down. Not quite sure what happened, but I'm going to have to think uh, seriously about how to A, stop future water from coming in, and B, how do I try to repair this? Also had some, some things rubbing against this and so it's worn through the wood even if I try to clean that up it's not going to clean up well so I think I'm, I'm thinking paint and then stenciling some trees and elk and things like that across that section to be able to give it just a nice uh, camping outdoorsy look and I think that might work really well what do you guys think what do you think would make that work So this is my fuse panel. Now I, I never did finish it because I wanted to label everything nice and I wanted to put a voltmeter right in here. Unfortunately at the time I was building this they didn't have nice little voltmeters that would just fit into a panel like this. They were really hard to find and super expensive. Now I can get them almost anywhere so I'm going to order one of those. Probably going to get a combined voltmeter amp meter and replace that. Also, this button, what's it for? Well, that's how I test my fuses. I've got it wired in such a way that when I press that, it will light up all of these fuses. And if one of the fuses is burned out, then that particular light will not go on. So it immediately tells me whether or not that fuse is good. And if I'm having a problem with that circuit, it's going to be downstream of this fuse if the light goes on. If the light doesn't go on, of course, I replace the fuse and, and go from there. So it works pretty well. Now, one thing I really do like on this is the ability to have an outlet right here. Having that back outlet really makes things nice, kind of helps us uh, when we're doing things out here, charging batteries or anything like that. Yep, so here's another place that we have issues. Now, right in here, you can see that the uh, flooring has started to peel up in the corners and that's happening all the way around the trailer. These trailers were never really, or this, this um, glue and all the materials that we use for this stuff was never really made for the types of heat that it's exposed to in this trailer. Uh, it just, it just never was meant for this kind of an operation. So I'm going to end up having to peel. It's going to be a pretty extensive refit because I'm going to end up having to peel all of this off and replace it because it's getting cut and, and stuff in certain areas. Now one thing I did because I, I could kind of forecast this day was coming when I was building the trailer. You see those screws across there? 
that's where I can open up and remove that back panel and that will give me access to pull the mattress out of the trailer. I've got a matching panel on the inside so I can just pull the mattress right out through the box. Now of course this looks like it would be in the way but I made this removable and I made the bottom pull out tray removable so it's going to be e relatively easy I will say to, to disassemble the trailer, the galley portion of it, and then be able to pull stuff out, replace vinyl, do all the things that need to be done to make this uh, trailer hopefully close to new. This is where most of the damage occurred. We were up in Tonopah. A huge gust of wind came and blew the hatch completely over the trailer and just absolutely smashed it apart. So Tony and I went in, put it together, and I say Tony and I kind of with a loose interpretation. He did the work, I didn't. But we pulled the hatch off, put all this back together, screwed it together, and it's just barely been holding, but you could see all the damage that it did. It was just absolutely destroyed this. So I'm not gonna try to repair it. I'm gonna go ahead and build a whole new hatch. So after the hatch crash, it's become obvious that two things are at issue right here. One is I built it way too heavy. Hard to believe that I would do that, but I did. And the second thing is, it just was too badly damaged in that crash. So I'm gonna end up having to build a newer one. And I'm gonna use the lessons I learned, and I am gonna to try to build it much, much lighter. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna to try to build with an aluminum frame instead of plywood, and I'm gonna go much lighter on the outer skin. So this was the antenna mount. This is where I had the original XM and uh, FM radio antennas. It was completely smashed. You can see all the damage that was done when the hatch came over. Also, if you look at the hatch, you can see just where we've had to patch it up and try to keep it going. Okay, so what else was crashed when the, uh, the hatch blew over? The roof vent. Completely smashed. Plastic was destroyed. The entire frame was bent. When I came back, I had to replace it because it was gonna let water into the trailer. So this time I went ahead and bought a fantastic fan. The nice thing about it is it's built right in. It really moves a lot of air. It'll go forward and reverse. And from the front, from inside, you can open the, the lid. So it's all self-contained. They make even more expensive ones that have remote control to turn it on and off and they also have those that will automatically close if it rains. Up oh, here we go again. Yep, it's time to do a lot of repairs. I was up filming the uh, hatch, the roof vent, and guess what happened? The mount for the fender broke completely off. So, before I can do anything, before I can go anywhere, I'm gonna have to build new mounts. Everything seems to be be overused a little bit, stressed out, so I think it's time to start start really tearing this thing apart and rebuilding all the parts that need to be rebuilt. So right back in, in here is a surround for the radio. And last time I was in here just checking things over, the entire back of the, uh, the surround just fell right off. So looks like that's gonna require some work as well. Gonna have to rebuild that. Now, the radio or the camera says it's going to get too hot and that it's going to shut itself off in a second. It's supposed to be 111 today, 113 tomorrow. So I think I'm going to wrap up filming for the day. <laughs>